Ana Maria, thank you so much for sitting down with me. Um, I'd just like to start the interview by just asking, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and how you came to be interested in nature and mental health? I'm a researcher at the Swedish University of Agriculture Science and basically I've been interested in nature through my entire life but it wasn't until I started to do my PhD uh, or prior, just prior to the PhD and I understood the importance for mental health by observing what's around me and uh, also through my previous work uh, in Iceland in the botanical garden mm -hmm. uh, how people not came only for uh, learning about plants but for pleasure and wellness mm -hmm. and that kind of led me towards from focusing on plants per se and the environment the landscape into more environment psychology and public health how can we build and use nature and natural elements to promote our health mm -hmm. so what, what are some of the works that you've been doing uh, within like um, re your research that kind of <coughs> connect both mental health and nature mm -hmm. well basically everything has to do with this interaction of environment outdoor setting where dominating natural en environment natural elements and how people, different people connect, use. Uh, we, as I said, we are a research team looking specific into qualities and, and the properties, uh, the sensory stimuli from the natural uh, environment and how we can promote health both in everyday life and also in specific rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. And then we have a long standing collaboration with the healthcare authorities in Skåne, our county, to find um, a way to use nature to be part of uh, the healthcare system, mm -hmm. which is now implemented, uh, and how we can emerge and get uh, nature and public health as a regular part of our healthcare. Mm -hmm. And that's a, yeah, 10 year, we are celebrating 10 years since implementation, but we are always leveling up uh, every for every procurement there is, and we have been through three, uh, we level up, it's evidence-based, we mm. look into all research, both in medical and healthcare and landscaping and environment psychology, mm and find the best uh, reasoning and uh, motivation for why this is and now we are also heading towards a evaluation of this 10-year project to see uh, the health effects uh, the reasons behind uh, people from the healthcare authority or primary healthcare uh, refer their clients mm -hmm. are they happy what's their experience and of course for those running nature-based uh, mm. intervention providers uh, pros and cons what do they need because we talk about sustainable business management and uh, sustainable uh, management of the outdoor setting and sustainable health so mm. it's all kind of linked and we're going to look in all those aspects and trying to kind of be able to understand and also to describe build in more evidence of uh, if this is working as a health promoting tool. Uh, before we kind of dive more deeper into the program you're running now, I just want to have a little bit of a context mm. of the Swedish healthcare system. Mm. Um, what were the things you were kind of seeing before you started your own uh, work within the healthcare system? Um, and what were the needs that mm. you thought you could help uh, in uh, developing and uh, improving? Well, actually, there was the the help and the reach out came from the healthcare authorities. Mm. Uh, the research here in Alnarp, uh, run by Professor Patrick Ron, he was find uh, finding uh, a way to collaborate with the healthcare authorities, and with a good result, they actually realized that this is something to count it on in this uh, healthcare be implemented and something that is could be mm. used more beneficial for uh, especially uh, illness that is health uh, that is lifestyle related mm. you cannot just give a cure pill 
uh, or treatment for something that has to do with also lifestyle and working situation and uh, so actually this uh, reach out came from the healthcare authority mm -hmm. saying we need more alternatives we see that this is really working could we collaborate and find a model we can implement mm -hmm. so that's actually how it uh, started for me to be part of that team so they came they came and reached out for you and they uh introduced you kind of into their yeah. so for somebody for let's say a um somebody who's who sees a need in their own country what would you um kind of suggest to them if a country does not have this kind of reaching out system but it does mm -hmm. have a need that could have been similar to sweden's need i think it's uh reasoning and showing best practices mm -hmm. having a dialogue dialogue a constructive dialogue mm -hmm. look <laughs> about uh, what are the challenges uh, there are similar challenges somewhere else mm -hmm. this is what they have done could this be implemented so it all starts in dialogue mm -hmm. uh, and kind of starting to have a mutual interest mm -hmm. and wanting to find the solution mm -hmm. All right, now let's dive deep, uh, dive into the pr your program. Mm. Can you go take me step by step? Like, how did you 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 let's say you mm. came into the meeting with this he the healthcare mm. authorities? How did you go from step A to actually implementing this program? And what are the diff Who are the different actors? Mm -hmm. Well, the, it takes some time mm -hmm. and you're not doing it alone you're doing it as a team mm -hmm. so we have a team from the university we have a team from uh, the healthcare authorities in Skåne we have the social security uh, uh, system and we have the labor market uh, representative for all of those because everybody is coming uh, and having to do with somebody who's on a sick leave mm -hmm. uh, so we came together mm -hmm and started from kind of not scratch we have experience from uh, the rehabilitation garden and it starts basically with mind map mapping mm -hmm. who has with responsibility who can do what yeah. and then gradually build up a feasibility study we did a two years feasibility study before this was implemented and pulled data f and ex um, data and research from different sites as well mm -hmm. so it's kind of the multi steps mm -hmm. starting for quite simple to quite complicated but it doesn't end when you have implemented you need to follow it through and see that the quality is the same the, not the same but quality is even improved mm -hmm. in all aspects so there are many steps it takes time mm -hmm. uh, but you have to be committed and believe in that there is a solution mm -hmm. uh, always ahead and reach those solutions as well and then go on to next step. Mm -hmm. Did you see any resistance from any of the state uh, actors within um, the beginning stages? Not really the the uh, the committed champions mm -hmm. from the different uh, governmental offices. No, they were keen on mm -hmm. uh, exploring how can we solve this but within each uh, kind of uh, system or of course there is always a skeptical mind everywhere and uh, then you just need to understand why are it what what kind of information do you need mm -hmm. uh, and also a dialogue and understanding communication not just posting evidence on people but also understanding what are the needs why why do you want to know more what you don't you maybe you don't want to know more and you're just ignoring it mm -hmm. but of course there is still there is you will always have the voice there is not enough evidence evidence we need more evidence mm -hmm. yeah of course we do that's research mm -hmm. otherwise i will be out of work uh, but we have to think about that uh, today this is our knowledge level mm -hmm. but we can always level up but we can also say we know a lot already. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of research backing mm -hmm. up why nature is good for you, why daylight is good for you, mm -hmm. why exercise outdoors are good for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and combining this into healthcare, this is not a rocket science. And I think it's a really good point that 
we have a lot of people uh, professionals working working within the healthcare system mm -hmm. that they want to move outdoors they are, they are trained indoors but they see the benefits of bringing their clients outdoor so we could talk about two kinds of room mm -hmm. indoor and outdoor and those professionals they want to come out because they see the beneficial and many had said that I can help my client in so much better way when we are outdoor with the, all the sensory stimuli uh, than I do indoors. Mm -hmm. So I think within this uh, system where there are critics, mm -hmm. uh, they are slowly kind of understanding that this is really not a rocket science. Mm -hmm. It's like a human, human basic things. We are born and raised in nature. We come from nature. Mm -hmm. We did not bo be born in, in this kind of environment and coming out and get back uh, into yeah as i said daylight multi-stimuli mm -hmm. uh, we have much more physical possibility of physical activities and even uh, when we are in tour we have kind of created a scene and people take the role and position mm -hmm. as a, I'm, I'm a teacher i have my students in front of me mm -hmm. but when i'm outdoors with them everybody has a knowledge to share Mm -hmm. Everybody is expert on something and that kind of becomes much more dynamic learning environment. Mm -hmm. So I see this as a teacher and I can definitely imagine uh, those who have got the taste of it bringing your clients outdoor how much valuable it is. I'm not saying the one thing is better than the other mm -hmm. but we should see the equal possibility to be indoor or outdoor. Mm -hmm. So. You have your program. Can you just tell me the name of the program? Um, in Swedish or English? It start in Swedish. Yeah, we. This particular program uh, is called uh, Natur understöd rehabilitering på landsbygden, mm -hmm. regionskådemodellen. So basically, we call it uh, Nur uh, Landsbygdskåne model, mm -hmm. and it is then by this in English kind of nature-based rehabilitation in the countryside and it's called then Skåne model. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me who this program is targeted for and the elements that kind of uh, build this program into what it is? Uh, it is targeted for a uh, individual or you could say a patient mm -hmm. uh, di clinically diagnosed with uh, mental exhaustion or mm -hmm. burnout, mm -hmm. uh, uh, depression and anxiety uh, this is like the primary uh, primary target group. Mm -hmm. So if you have one of those three, you are, are uh, have yeah succeeded with the inclusion criteria. Mm -hmm. So it's particularly done for those three uh, clinical uh, diagnoses. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is uh, not a treatment. It is a add on to ongoing treatment as a support. And this is giving the client, uh, although the patient, they call it more clients or participants when they are out in the countryside or in the nature. This is giving them the possibilities to mental recover, physical mm -hmm. recover in an undemanding environment. Mm -hmm. And being, as we said, being in daylight because many of them are indoor, mm -hmm. never go out, not even to shop uh, or meet family. So just coming out, breaking the social isolation, coming out, meet uh, other people in the same situation seems to be also very important because mm -hmm. you don't have to explain yourself. Everybody mm -hmm. un understands this. So in that, ta in that sense, it's a freedom. Mm -hmm. You can just do what you need. And basically a lot of people that start with rest in nature, we call it uh, resting in, uh, you're awake, but you're resting. Uh, most we have interviewed said this is not the same rest as being indoors sitting on your couch. Mm -hmm. uh, here you have a, a moderate stimuli of smell, what you hear, natural sounds, mm -hmm. uh, what you see, uh, and all of those things are kind of helping you to calm down. Mm -hmm. And then gradually you build up your energy. And many have said that after a while when I kind of recover, they say that it's like I'm lying on my knee, but now I'm standing up. Uh, th this is kind of the in comparison what they're saying. And then I can start to use, take more or better use of all the rehab alternatives. Mm -hmm. Because when you have, for example, you have 
mental exhaustion, your executive function are out. Mm -hmm. So the cognitive thing of thinking and making sense of things is not there. And what this is also about to get down into the body, mm -hmm. feeling alive, feeling one with your body. Some people don't even smell anything, they don't really f feel anything. So get back to your body and gradually come up mm -hmm. in the thoughts and being able to make sense of what's being done in the other rehab alternatives. And how do these patients or clients, mm. how are they able to uh, get into the program? Uh, they are referred by the primary care mm -hmm. and there's then of course medical doctor who mm -hmm. makes the uh, diagnose mm -hmm. and if you fit one of the three criteria, the primary criteria, you will be you can, if you want to, be referred to this intervention. And what are the primary criteria? Those three, you have to be diagnosed with one of those three ICDS codes. Mm -hmm. Mental exhaustion, mm -hmm. depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And now, wh where do they go? So what are, wh who are the, wh what you call, I think, providers mm -hmm. in the program? Yeah. Um, can so, you tell me a little bit about yeah, the providers? Yeah, so if, if I'm diagnosed with this, one of these primary mm -hmm. criteria, I would say, okay, there is the list. I take the list and say, okay, where, mm -hmm. who's offering this? Where do I live? Mm -hmm. I'm allowed to go anywhere. So I could find there is a description, uh, what they offer, where they are, and then I could say, ah, this one is really interested. So I make a contact and say, I would be interested to come for a visit just to see what it is. I visit you. Mm -hmm. and I feel comfortable with you, I think the environment is interesting, I'm into horses, there's a horse there, so mm -hmm. I'm staying. So then I decide I'm starting. And then the primary healthcare will send a referral through the healthcare system and say, Anna Maria is coming and she's chosen that particular nature-based uh, provider, mm -hmm. uh, NBI provider. And then I can start my approximately eight week uh, uh, visit or stay at your uh, facility. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But they don't sleep over, they just come no. for half the day. Yeah. Is that correct? It's four hours a day, three weeks a day. Mm -hmm. And you need to be able to manage this trip back and forth uh, to be able to be part of the program. So on your own, <coughs> or somebody will bring you, is that correct? Uh, on, you should yeah. be able to get there on your own or somebody can bring you? Yeah, somebody base. can bring you as well. Mm. Yeah, definitely. So how do providers become providers? What is the process? Yeah, the, mm. it is official procurement. That means there are a list of all kinds of things you have to be pass, basically. Mm -hmm. And there's a legal issue, it's about the business issue. And then it comes to your outdoor environment mm -hmm. and it comes to the program and who's working there and so on, what kind of profession do they have. Mm -hmm. So there is like a list of qualification and if you pass, pass that, then you're in the evaluation. So this is kind of first uh, sorting out mm -hmm. uh, yes and no's. Mm -hmm. And when you get the yes, you will go into like a detailed evaluation uh, yeah, further on, especially mm -hmm. about the outdoor environment, the program. Mm -hmm. And what do these providers, uh, lo the locations look like? What are, what are these certain criteria that they have to tick off in order to be, to be able to qualify? Like actually quite many. Mm -hmm. uh, there is everything from the physical properties, what's there, what kind of greenery or plants and landscape there mm -hmm. is. Uh, also how it's connected uh, within each other. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there is like a quite a long list you need to t tick for the environment, for other facilities that you need to be able to access and also accessibility, uh, you need to be able to get there. So our experience is if you're too far out, mm -hmm. it's difficult to get there, uh, you will not get the clients. So you need to also think about the placement of where in the, vin uh, in the county you are mm -hmm. and how is it, how the accessibility to your places. Mm -hmm. So a lot of uh, these uh, providers, um, they are, they obviously have work work themselves. They have other business um, mm. that they run. So what is the draw for them to become providers, or what have you uh, seen? What what do you what are your thoughts of why 
these mm -hmm. uh, people running these places want to be within this program? I would actually say I haven't done any, not, I haven't done an evaluation, but my experience and take home after ten years mm -hmm. working closely with providers it, that they are interested in people, they are interested in nature, mm -hmm. animals, and they are interested in welfare generally. Mm. And uh, there are, of course, people that are business minded and doing it for the business, mm -hmm. but there is always a heart in there. Mm -hmm. So I have not met anyone without the heart and kindness and caring for both the environment and p people. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's quite a, a like a profile we could say is the general profile. Mm -hmm. Walk me through a day, well, a day of a uh, client um, at one of the providers. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to follow a certain structure, mm -hmm. and that structure is based on our research. Mm -hmm. What our client said was creating a, a safety environment where mm -hmm. they felt safe, secure and safe. And that is actually kind of starting off the day is welcome. You gather the group mm -hmm. and you see who's here and then you move on it's quite short can be short but then you move on to your own time mm -hmm. and we call this when you come you land and kind of get together and then you take the additional time to just relax you find your spot you can walk you can sit you can do whatever but it's your own time to relax mm -hmm. and come even further down to the relaxation uh, and then there is like an open offer and an invitation if you want to be part of some activities and that you can choose if you want to and if you're just up today i just need to i just have the urge to walk or urge to sit in the sun mm -hmm. or whatever i do that but there is also organized activity that you are invited to participate and that's really important in this that the, the participants themselves are not running the project. Mm. They are like guests and they can go in and out as they please mm -hmm. without any explanation. So I could come and look at what you're doing and then I realize I'm, I'm, I don't really want to do this. I just withdraw without have, having to excuse myself or explain anything. Mm -hmm. And this is something we uh, learned from our research mm -hmm. uh, that is really important to be able to do because quite a lot of people in this situation are used to kind of being seen to everybody's okay mm. and never attending to themselves. Mm -hmm. And now this is the time when you can attend to yourself and mm -hmm. your own needs. Uh, how would you define success for the program? Or how would you define success for each uh, participant or client? Have you had any feedback or gathered any data? Yeah, definitely. If, uh, especially from uh, the research we did two years prior to this mm -hmm. implementation, uh, we saw that there is this wake, they call it, I came back to myself, I can feel I'm alive mm -hmm. and just I feel I want something. Mm -hmm. uh, so you could call it like an awakening. Mm -hmm. uh, coming back to life is one of the success. And that's actually the basically first step mm -hmm. of moving forward, not to be in the same place as always. Mm -hmm. And even though the, the entire program and the research is based on people that have been on a cycle for shorter time, this is actually the case that we have clients that have been on a sick leave for three, five, seven, mm -hmm. eight, nine years. And that's a quite long time. Mm -hmm. And of course they are also helped by it, but this should come much earlier in your mm -hmm. uh, sick leave that you are held back, back, yeah. on, back on track and they have knee orientation, they recover, re uh, rediscover old uh, interest or they gain new interest and it's really kind of s seeing hope seeing the light and wanting to go on mm -hmm. uh, not being just sick and give up because many have just given up of and of everything mm -hmm. even their family and their friends and themselves so coming into a, our environment where you can feel normal mm -hmm. you can actually laugh and you can feel happy. That is kind of setting the process of 
uh, yeah, we could say happy hormone. Mm -hmm. And then, and you can, of course, you do sport or something else. That's also you uh, uh, level up your ha happy hormones. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is also one way to get come come in action again. Mm -hmm. And what we see, of course, is also that in the pilot and and the visibility study we did before we could see that every person mm -hmm. in that program over two years they moved from being uh, more or less uh, on a sick leave mm -hmm. to starting to move forward 25 percent some 50 percent they were moving forward toward uh, yeah you could say labor market mm -hmm. uh, again so but this is a, a it has to become uh, an an alternative much sooner in the uh, when you're on a sick leave Mm -hmm. And how do you continuously like evaluate and um, ensure that the program is running to high quality standards? Um, you mentioned the procurement coming up. Like, what is your process, and what are you doing uh, now? Well, now, for it? now, uh, well, not just now. I have been looking for more methods mm -hmm. than we have in implemented. How can we ensure that the uh, outer environment we are uh, selecting mm -hmm. actually hold high quality and are actually restorative mm -hmm. and yeah we stumble on a very interesting uh, model and a framework that has this uh, narrow science um, base mm -hmm. which is really what is about for this group of clients they need this kind of restoration and the CLM model mm -hmm. uh, or the framework uh, we have just tested it in the field to see can we use this kind of method to evaluate the the places and uh, yeah definitely we mm -hmm. can so now the next step is to kind of concrete concrete size or putting it into more concrete way of how should how would we do it in the procurement. Mm -hmm. so tell me about your first time trying the contemplative uh, landscape model out in the field. Um, I, I mean, I'm sure mm -hmm. you, you read the book prior, you mm -hmm. had a short training course by the, uh, the founder of the method. Mm -hmm. What was it like uh, working it in the field? It was actually fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also, there were qualities that I'm, they were there, but I was not paying and notice mm -hmm. attention to them and we were really focused on the kind of the the most close by mm -hmm. uh, nature or the environment and in this model we also realized how important this outer space mm -hmm. or outer zone as, as well are important and that would be very hard to place this kind of uh, uh, providers in the urban setting mm -hmm. because you would not have those qualities there so in a way i kind of got already got upgraded that we are on the right spot mm -hmm. out in the countryside and there was a the right choice but now we, we kind of have a proof yeah there is some kind of underlying uh, mechanism that we didn't know of but kind of still that was the startup this would be better than in in the urban setting mm -hmm. so what's my experience yes uh, fun mm -hmm. uh, I'm really excited it's also challenging mm -hmm. you have to start to think in another way mm -hmm. than we are used to but with a really good support from the founder we we learned by mm -hmm. doing and kind of scenario based learning mm -hmm. and yeah, so we, I look forward to actually try to do this together with my colleague, mm -hmm. uh, Sara, that we actually now go on our own. And So I really like, uh, so I look very much forward to go with my colleague Sara and actually we have three more places to go. We've done five here mm -hmm. and to do them on our own and see what we come up to. I'm happy to see they have the reference that we are quite close to, mm -hmm. the expert uh, of this model. Mm -hmm. So it gives good hope that we can actually pull this off. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any future steps that you want to take with this method? Yeah, well, this is one mm -hmm. that is applying it to this kind of settings mm -hmm. out in the, in the countryside. But we have uh, several studies.
is studying the forest mm -hmm. as a healing environment mm -hmm. and we want to see can we apply that method in that context mm -hmm. uh, does it have to be modified in any way and I think definitely the base is there mm -hmm. and there are a lot of things we already can tick uh, so there, it would be very much interesting to apply it to a forest scape and as you know like forest is not like a forest mm -hmm. but what yeah where do we find the restorative potentials and we have a lot of data on the, from the clients in different parts of Sweden mm -hmm. uh, where they talk about which qualities are important in forest bathing and forest therapy mm -hmm. and we will start a larger study mm -hmm. and then we will pull out those details and see can we actually confirm them by this framework Mm -hmm. Yeah, we from your landscape were very excited uh, to hear that um, CLM is coming to Sweden. Uh, a lot of the uh, reasoning for it coming to mm -hmm. Sweden and being propagated here is uh, because of you. So, you know, we're very, very grateful mm -hmm. for you being such a force behind, um, such a cheerleader behind the method. Mm -hmm. Why do you think Sweden is you know, take such a powerhouse in in this. Besides, I mean, besides you being the superwoman, kind of pushing it forward, <coughs> it is the first European country to mm. kind of ad uh, adopt it. Singapore was, is the first country in the world, mm. and then Sweden is now mm. picking up pace and you know running after. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Basically, I don't know, but mm. I think we have people around us. Mm -hmm. Uh, that are interesting in development mm -hmm. and have a better quality in in the service they provide mm -hmm. and they want to have service to a lot of other alternatives than just one so this mm -hmm. is like a one nature-based intervention is like one of many mm -hmm. uh, and I think also if you look at Sweden as a whole mm -hmm. the re county of Skåne is the first one to implement this mm -hmm. uh, with and there's like 10 years and three procurements mm -hmm. and hopefully the fourth and <coughs> that's just showing that maybe in this region there is like a force of uh, people uh, force and people that are interested in uh, yeah service development mm -hmm. uh, innovation uh, front runners and mm -hmm. thinking forward so I would not be able to do any of this if they want for colleagues mm -hmm. and collaborators within the healthcare system I, that would be a, I couldn't do it so you could really say this is a co-creation mm -hmm. well it's a buzzword but this is really a co-creation mm -hmm. where we come in with all our knowledge and one thing I feel also uh, in this collaboration over like we actually start in November 2009 so it's not just 10 years uh, is the this like respect for each other and mm -hmm. each other's competence that's also a base for a good way of being a able to develop mm -hmm. and not this uh, uh, kind of protection of my there is no such but it is like us mm -hmm. and I think that's also a, one of the factors why mm -hmm. we are moving forward and m moving forward uh, even within it's not like it's not enough to be implemented mm -hmm. we want to do more and and we do it as a team I mean mm -hmm. the team from the uh, healthcare authority they've also come out and look and meet the uh, providers uh, so they really also show an interest and that's really important for the providers because then they get uh, they realize also this is serious business it's not mm -hmm. just open up the 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 garden or, or the forest or whatever it's really serious business and mm -hmm. that makes them also more serious in their work uh, to uh, to provide a high quality service mm -hmm. so what is your main goal then what what would you like to see being achieved in the Swedish population or in within your community what would make you sit back you know sit back on your couch and be like yes we did it I don't think I will sit on the couch. I think I was always being yeah. like, what's next? Yes, <laughs> meeting you. I don't think you would ever be able to sit on the couch. Uh, well, you need the couch. Well, I, maybe I would take rest in the garden or the forest, mm -hmm. but uh, what will take kind of 
I would say success and happy or feeling uh, accomplishment. I feel we have done a lot of accomplishment, but I think there is this mentality of wanting to do better mm -hmm. tomorrow than we did today mm -hmm. and do it in a matter that manners that are also evidence based mm -hmm. and also the courage of saying let's explore that is not really known. Mm -hmm. I mean that's actually the way forward not just to keep ah this is working let's mm -hmm. stay there but there is always something you can do better mm -hmm. um, and I would like to see this kind of implemented in the into the entire like this society mm -hmm. that we have more than nature greenery up closer to our everyday life I would like to see this in the like kindergarten, the schools, the elderly home, the hospitals. It should be more like bringing more nature into our everyday life. And then the thing we don't, maybe perhaps there will be less uh, need of rehabilitation mm -hmm. because we have this more uh, health promoting environment in everyday life. And also I would like to see that actually those who work in healthcare and are treating people and have the possibilities to take the clients outdoors. This should be also be implemented in the architecture mm -hmm. uh, because quite often when you're designing, the, you design the, the, the building mm -hmm. and there's a lot of focus on the indoor and then there is the outdoor, then there it's kind of living on its own mm -hmm. and it should be immersed so you see this as a one, one whole wholeness and where you when you design for example hospital you're thinking in both ways mm -hmm. and also thinking that there is an outer room and into a room and as a professional you should be provided with both mm -hmm. I would like to see that happening and that is like every day as a general rule yeah mm -hmm. we've yeah. come to the end of our interview are there any last thoughts that you'd like to share well, I would say I'm really happy that you guys came. I'm really happy that you shared your knowledge mm -hmm. and experience. I think this is really pushed forward mm -hmm. in our work and argumentation and showing why things uh, can be improved mm -hmm. or not things, but the, our way of evaluating uh, uh, the outdoor environment. And this can be used in so many other th aspects, not just for the procurement, uh, but I would like to see this as well uh, introduced to our students because then they can take it out when they uh, graduate and mm -hmm. start to work uh, in different places in the society. Mm -hmm. uh, they can have this with them because I think this is the way forward of understanding and having good argumentation and science behind mm -hmm. the framework. Mm -hmm. I would also say that uh, you guys coming here uh, and dare to actually say okay let's work together mm -hmm. uh, that's also uh, something we need to be able to open up and mm -hmm. share mm -hmm. and respect each other's role uh, but seeing the positive way of merging uh, knowledge mm -hmm. and kind of le oh, again leveling up and, and kind of finding ways of uh, what, what you could collaborating, co yeah, and collaborating, growing and developing. Yeah, there's like this, not the, like a fusion, but first you go in and then you go out. So we get together and then yeah. we make something out of it, like a flower. Yeah, there you go. And with the seed tooth. <laughs> yes. Um, so thank you for this interview. Um, we are very grateful for the invitation, and we've had a lovely time. So thank thank you. you. Same too. Same thank to you. you.